Hey guys, so I am going out for a walk, um, as you can probably tell because it's super windy. Um, so sorry if the audio is not great, but um, I just wanted to do a real talk video with you guys today. I've been kind of waiting for an opportunity to do this. Um, just wanted to share a little bit of my story with you guys in case it could help, you know, other people who are going through similar stuff feel, you know, a little bit less alone in what they're going through. I'm going on a walk today because I needed to get my butt out the door and get some sunshine and yesterday was a lot harder than today even and I walked over to my mom and dad's and they only live like a few blocks away and oh my gosh I started walking and I thought oh I bit off more than I can chew um, so yeah a little bit about my story I guess in the chronic fatigue stuff um, about seven years ago, I got done with college, and sorry, you guys, if the wind is a little crazy right now. <laughs> um, bear with me. This is authentic and raw. Um, now, about seven years ago, I got back from college, and I had pushed really hard in college, and I'd done a lot of summer classes, too, so I didn't really get any good breaks in the time I was in college, and I graduated a semester early, too, so, um... Anyway, I crammed a lot into a short amount of time, and I really burnt out, and when I got home after college, I was struggling a lot with feeling really depressed, and also just this sense of just no stamina whatsoever. Like, if I cleaned my apartment, I'd be, like, in bed the next day or two, just passed out in bed because I was so tired. So it took me about six months to kind of work back from that initial crash and I haven't really been the same since. Um, and so off and on, I'd go to the doctor and do blood tests and stuff and didn't really get any definitive answers. And then about four years ago, I had a super bad case of mono. And honestly, looking back, I don't know if the mono was super bad or if the mono just triggered my chronic fatigue to get a lot worse during that time but I was pretty much bedridden for two months and off work. And then when I went back to work, I only could work about a day a week and um, just kind of limped along for another year and a half, two years um, until I was able to get on some medicine that kind of helped perk me back up, help ease um, some of the anxiety and depression stuff that was going along with that um, and really helped me kind of get my life back. Um, yeah, but lately life's just been kind of crazy and there's been a lot of extra stuff um, on my plate and I think that's part of the challenge too is um, it can be really good stuff that you really want to do that's keeping you busy and it still makes you feel like crap and um, it's kind of hard to express to people why like even the stuff you should want to be doing is stuff you can't really do um, yeah so I don't know I just wanted to wait till a time when I wasn't feeling awesome to talk to you guys about this because I don't know, something about talking to you about it on a day that was a good day seemed kind of not very genuine. For those of you who don't know, chronic fatigue is not really very well defined, and I think that's part of the struggle with having it as well. Is There's not a blood test that reveals that you have it. It's more the opposite, actually. They run a lot of blood tests and determine you don't have anything else, and then finally we'll diagnose you with that. So for me, I just got diagnosed like last month, I think, about maybe four weeks ago. Um, I'd always suspected I had it, but it's really wonderful to finally actually have a diagnosis. It's funny, a lot of times when people are diagnosed with chronic illnesses that there is no cure for, it tends to be seen as a really negative thing. But I've heard from people with chronic fatigue syndrome, I've seen like online, I'm not the only one who feels like that's like a really great thing to finally have a diagnosis, because otherwise you just sort of feel like it's all in your head. Right now I'm filming this during the whole quarantine thing. And um, I'm going to turn around and walk back because there's a dog. <laughs> um, weirdly this week I think I realized it's kind of bringing back a lot of memories of that really bad spell I had with my mono. I think it was March when I got the mono. And so I pretty much was in bed for the spring and then so limited for the summer. And 
I felt like I kind of lost that whole year. And I think this quarantine thing and the whole virus is kind of bringing back some of those bad memories for me. I don't say that to be like whiny because I work for a nonprofit um, helping orphans and vulnerable children in Africa and Asia. And let me tell you folks, we have it so good. Um, we can still go to a grocery store at the end of the day. We may not be able to get our toilet paper, but we can go to a grocery store. And I look at my little house and I realize my husband and I live in what would comparably be a mansion um, to like the people in the slums of India right now who are living packed in so tight together. Like they can't even do social distancing there. It's not an option for them. So I do realize we have it really good, but I think it's important right now, especially with people dealing with a lot of the mental health issues right now as we're getting into the, you know, third, fourth week of quarantines. Um, it's just bound to make that a little worse. And I want to bring it up because I think there's something so therapeutic about just talking about it with another person who understands. And yes, there's always someone who has it worse, but that doesn't mean that whatever you're going through with it isn't legitimate. Um, but for those of you out there who maybe have chronic fatigue during this time, um, hang in there guys. Um, I don't know why I feel like it makes it worse. I think it's just being in your house 24 seven makes it harder because on the days when you're doing really bad, you're stuck on the couch and then you're working in the same exact environment. And so there's really like, there's no delineation between your sick times and your healthy times and all of that. It's not all in your head, but it can very quickly go to your head and, and make you feel really bummed out. And so um, getting the sunshine, seeing the world around you, if you have the ability to get into nature, try. Oh my gosh, you guys gotta see this. Aren't these pretty? This is just so beautiful. Take time to smell the flowers, guys. <laughs> I got pollen on the phone. <laughs> One thing I would say when you are indoors, um, one thing that I've seen that has helped, and sometimes it's still kind of too cold to be out, um, I put oils on my diffuser. I think there's something about just having your senses stimulated, especially when you're feeling so worn out and so exhausted for no good reason. Just the smell of peppermint oil or something happy smelling can just lift your mood a little bit, and a little bit can go a long way, guys. Um, ask for help. My husband has been pitching in with the cooking and the cleaning and stuff and I, I hate that I have to ask him to do that sometimes when he's still working as well but ask for help and hopefully you have people in your life who are supportive if not message me in the comments and I'll I'll be your little buddy <laughs> try not to believe that you're lazy because immediately you feel like you are um, it's just the weirdest feeling to one day be super motivated and be able to do a ton of things and then the next day you have absolutely no motivation and it feels like there's no reason for you not to. So try not to be too hard on yourself. I'm trying to think for the guys, see a lot of the things I do I feel like are kind of girly. So if you're a guy and you're struggling with chronic fatigue, maybe put the comment down below for the other men who struggle with this. I think it's more prevalent in women, but I know there are men who have it as well. So maybe you could put some comments down there for your fellow brothers. Um, in the CFS tribe and just let them know what like guy type activities are helpful because for girls I would say take a nice hot bath if you're feeling up to it sometimes when I'm having a really bad spell it uh hot water actually makes me feel really nauseous so sometimes I can't do the baths um maybe do a foot soak instead um try to eat healthy I think that's part of the struggle too for me right now is I'm trying to eat healthy um but uh it's tricky to do that when you already feel like crap, you know, to motivate, to discipline yourself, to take care of yourself is just harder. It takes more effort, but you can do it. Eat regular meals. Try not to skip meals. Try not to eat meals like two or three hours late. Sorry guys, it got really windy and there's traffic noise. <laughs> Find a counselor or a therapist. Um, I have a counselor who's actually turned into one of my best friends and I consider her my mentor she's been wonderful and um, so sometimes you just need that person 
to talk stuff through with. Even if you're not much of a talker, I think it just really helps. Yeah, really appreciate my sister-in-law. I reached out to her today and just said, hey, pray for me. I'm not feeling really great and not sure how best to take care of myself. And she said, I got you, girl. And I started to cry. So you know what? Maybe that's my other piece of advice is have a good cry once in a while. Yeah, I don't know if that's good advice for the dudes out there. So guys, seriously, if you're going through this right now, please do comment because I can't really give good advice for the male part of um, this audience and I'd be really curious what helps you guys um, specifically and how you've dealt with it. Um, yeah, and if you have questions about chronic fatigue syndrome, if you want to know more or you want me to, I don't know, share something else about it, I really am an open book on it. Um, I've grown a lot through it, so I'm more than willing to talk about it. I'm, I don't find it some, it's not something I'm ashamed of. Also guys, you guys are really helping me today because if I wasn't talking to you, I'd be a lot more aware of how I was feeling and I probably wouldn't have walked this far. So maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, I honestly don't know. <laughs> Pace yourself, celebrate the little wins. If you're going through a similar physical journey right now on top of being in quarantine, feel free to reach out in the comments. Just share a little bit about what you're dealing with right now with it. And uh, let people know ways that they can cope, things that you've found to help. Take care of each other, love each other, be safe, be healthy. Um, take it one day at a time. I say all that, it's not easy to do. Oh my goodness, guys talking to you made me walk so much further than I would have walked and I'm realizing how far I have to go to get home. Yippee! <laughs> Just watched uh, the start over. Just walked past the uh, neighbor's house and they have the cutest little dog and that made me remember another piece of advice that would be good for dudes and gals. Um, Last night I actually called my mom, had her bring her dog over for me, and just snuggled with the dog for a few hours in the evening. Um, I don't know, I just wanted an animal to cuddle with. When I was young I used to talk through all of my preteen woes with my cat. So I guess there's still a little girl down in there that when she's having a bad day she just wants to snuggle with an animal. And That might be another good piece of advice if you have a friend who has an animal who could let you borrow them for an evening. Um, when you're having a rough spell, or if you could maybe adopt from a pet shelter, um, just to have something that, you know, is there, a non-judgmental <laughs> little body that you can snuggle with that you don't have to prove anything to, um, sometimes that's really nice, and, uh, yeah, my hubby was really sweet, he's like, oh yeah, that's fine, have her bring the dog over, I don't care almost home you guys. <gasps> I made it. We'll see how I feel tomorrow after doing this. Oh boy. Real talk guys. Real talk. Oh wait. I'm not looking at the camera. Real talk. Oh that was stupid. <laughs>